Hello and welcome to the 2024 Southland Conference Beach Volleyball Season Previews. And I am joined right now by Southeastern Louisiana's head coach, Jeremy White and Andrea Da Silva. Coach Andrea, thank you so much for being with us today. How are you guys doing? Ready to uh, get ready to uh, move on from the indoor court to the beach court now. And Coach, I'll, I'll start with you there. Obviously, you've had an incredible amount of success on the indoor court in recent seasons. What's it going to take for you to translate that and for this team to be able to emulate that on the beach court? A lot of the same stuff that we've we've done on the indoor side. It's it's coming out and you know continuing to grow as an athlete, as a person, as you know, as an overall team, and just um, you know continue to grow a, a, what a championship culture looks like on the beach instead. I think we've got the athletes now to kind of start uh, pressing forward and putting ourselves in those situations, and now we just got to go perform, make it happen. And Andrea, great to see you too. Um, how's preseason been for you working with Coach White and and how, how excited are you to get going here in 2024? It looks very good. I'm really excited to play because like we, we really have good athletes this year. So I'm excited to see what we can do in the conference. Awesome. When you're building this roster, Coach, there's a lot of turnover year on year, right? And then there's some crossover from the indoor to the beach team, but there's also a completely different kind of recruiting cycle. So how difficult is it for you to juggle those two things? And and what have you gone about doing to alter and build this beach roster this season? It, it is different. It's, it's it's tough sometimes just in regards to when things are happening um, for the beach recruiting, you know, in vault or Mixed with the, uh, you know, the indoor side of things too. So when you're, you know, not able to go out during the fall and do too much because you're in the middle of the indoor season and then you've got a very small window for the indoor recruiting, it also puts you in smaller windows for your beach recruiting and stuff as well. Luckily, Colin did a phenomenal job while he was here helping us uh, kind of grow that roster. I think the biggest piece though is is us moving from a, uh, moving into becoming a fully funded program over the last couple of years, allowing us the ability to go out and grab some nice stud athletes like Andy over here next to me. Um, and we're just going to continue to do those things. And I think that's the, uh, that's really the ticket now. We've got the pieces. We've got the, uh, you know, we got what's necessary to go be competitive within the recruiting realm. And uh, and now we just go about doing it. We've, we've, we're really excited about the kids we have now on the team. We have, we're excited about the kids coming in in the future. And uh, so it's definitely – moving towards a situation where Southeastern beach volleyball is going to have resemble a lot more like what we look like on the indoor side too. And Andy, I have to touch on the fact that you are obviously a long way from home. Uh, you're originally from Andorra, a very small country in, in central Europe that some people may not have heard of before. And I think you might be the first person to ever live in Hammond, Louisiana, excuse me, Hammond, America, originally from Andorra. So what's that transition been like and how have you settled in down there? At southeastern Louisiana. It wasn't that hard because I I first went to Florida, and it is really different from my country just because of the level in my country. We barely have players that play beach, and when I came here, the opportunity to play beach the whole time is just like amazing. So probably that's the biggest difference, just the level of volleyball. And what's Coach White like to work with? I I know, I know him through through the indoor circuit, but what's his beach coaching style like? Is it very different to what you grew up with? I see kind of my dad and Jeremy. They're pretty similar. So I'm kind of used to this type of coaching where, I don't know, he just go straight to the point and and just do it and that's it. Not a lot of, a lot of sugarcoating going on here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Coach, when you you described Andy as a, as a stud athlete, so when you have the opportunity to to bring someone like her into the program, what, if any, is the pitch about bringing their talents to Hammond and joining you at Southeast? I mean, I think in the beginning it was, you know, trying to, you know, just selling what we, what our vision is for the program um, and, and kind of tying it a little bit to the success we've had on the indoor side and, and really just understanding how, you know, the use of our program, meaning uh, – just in the years it's been around and, and the fact that we're kind of in the building stages of it and, and selling that, hey, we're we're capable and ready to do the exact same things we've done on the indoor side, on the beach side. And, uh, but now really it's, it's, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a lot about just, hey, look, we're, we're significantly different this year. We're, we're physical, more physical than we've ever been. We've got great players, you know, one through five in the lineup. We got depth behind that and we're gonna keep growing that piece. So now it's really more along the lines of like, 
showing what we can do on the court so we can continue to grow the, uh, you know, just let's say like the selling of the program, but just kind of what our program should look like and what it's going to look like in the future. And as you do that, obviously building a schedule is, is a huge part of that. And you have some SEC competition this year with LSU, with South Carolina. And the ironic uh, nature of, of having Oregon on the schedule the first weekend, having faced them in the NCAA tournament with the indoor squad at the end of last season. So when you build this roster here, excuse me, this schedule here in 2024, um, what what was your thought process in, in, in those that you scheduled? And, and how difficult a test are some of these non-conference challenges going to be? Uh, I think a lot of it's, you know, we have, I was talking to Andy about this a little while ago, we have kind of the luxury in Louisiana of kind of being rather centrally located with multiple schools in our area that, you know, between us and UNO and LSU and, and Tulane that are all kind of, that are hosting often and, and people want to come in and play at those locations. And so it gives us the opportunity to play some pretty, uh, you know, some different competition from around the country, get some, you know, tougher people in. And I think the big piece of it is, you want to challenge yourself early um, and often because, you know, the goal of this is to, you know, to put yourself in the best position to be successful at the end of the year of the conference tournament and, uh, and get that automatic qualifier to the NCAAs. And, and you've got to play good teams in order to do that. You have to challenge yourself. If you go out and you, uh, you, you don't put your athletes in a position that's going to, you know, put them under the, uh, the microscope, I guess, in a sense, where they're going to get you know exposed for what they aren't doing well at this you know at the beginning of the season, so they can work on improving that throughout. Then, uh, then you're going to end up walking into the you know the most important time of year, um, not prepared. And so we want to make sure we're we're doing a great job of mixing, you know, the opportunity to go out and be successful, but at the same time go out and challenge ourselves against the best competition in the country as often as we can. Um, you know, we'll, we'll also go to Pepperdine this year play there as well. So that'll put us some more tough, uh, some tough competition from the West coast and it'll be a good mix of what we see. And uh, we'll get to see multiple types of teams. So hopefully we'll be prepared to play pretty much anybody we face in the conference uh, mid-year and championships. Andrea, I noticed that your uh, face broke into a little bit of a smile there when coach mentioned the ability to win the conference, get the automatic qualifier and play in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, that's everyone's goal at the end. But what do you think it will take for this team to be able to achieve that goal and win a Southland Conference championship? I just think we just need to keep practice, working on like our chemistry as a team. And I think we can we we can achieve that goal pretty good this year. We like we have high expectations this year about the team. So yeah, I'm excited for that. I can say green and gold was uh, quite competitive. Yeah, it was. Andrea, when when you've joined this this new locker room and, and getting to know your new teammates, what's that process been like and, and how welcoming have you found the whole community down there in Hammond? I was kind of weird about it because I'm the only international coming and I came from a team where we all were internationals, but I found really good friends in here that I can trust everybody and I don't know, we'll see how it goes. And the girls are pretty nice too, so good. Coach, just, just lastly for you, when you describe to an incoming recruit or someone like Andy who you're persuading to to join the program, what do you tell them about the style of play that, that you guys have down there and, and what you're trying to accomplish every time you step on the court? I think the big piece that we're, we're trying to sell is that um, we play a different type of volleyball, I think, down here. Um, it's, you know, you've, you're – Louisiana as a whole, um, and really just a lot of the Southern, like, you don't get a lot of super large players all the time. Um, so you have to be great in ball control. you got to learn how to play just the game itself at a high level. You know, we were, we were discussing some recruiting stuff a little while ago, me and Andy, and I was talking about the difference between being a great athlete and being a great volleyball player. Um, and not that there's anything negative about a great athlete or anything like that. It's just there's a difference in when you – know how to play the game at a really high level and you can actually outplay your uh, overall athleticism. And I've seen that a ton in our area and that's what we're trying to achieve. And I think that's where you see, you know, you've seen that style of play. Um, now you're seeing on the national stage with, with the fact that you've got uh, Cloth and Nuss playing, you know, about to be get ready to play in the Olympics. And and Nuss is a kid who came and played through that style as, as a 
lesser sized athlete who's just learning how to play at this really high level of ball control and has made herself into an elite athlete in the world. And we're hoping to kind of create that same style of volleyball, just utilizing what we've done, you know, what, what's been really here from the beginning, which is this high ball control, high IQ style of play on the beach and really on the indoor court, which is some as well. And so we're hoping that the kids we've brought in that are dual kids that play both will be able to translate some of the same things from the indoor side and the success there to the beach side. And we're going to continue to recruit athletes that can do the same thing on the beach side and, and then mix them with a few uh, stud athletes, you know, that are sitting next to me. <laughs> And just lastly, Andy, I just wanted to kind of get your take on your new surroundings, right? So firstly, what's the thing you miss most from home in Andorra? And what's your review so far on some of the Cajun cuisine down there in Louisiana? If I try to be up? I don't think so. Oh, I didn't. Killing me. We're going to have to get her going. I do know that they, they like to go to uh, tacos and beer a lot. Of course, that is such a terrible name to be talking about mm -hmm. in our Southland pre uh, presentation preview here. <laughs> but uh I know they love that place. They they like to go hit, get their tacos and queso. <laughs> and what's probably the what's the biggest thing you miss from home in Andorra? The, the thing I miss the most is my family, my mom, dad, and my sister. Well, we hope that they'll be able to tune in uh, and watch our championship on ESPN Plus this year, and hopefully see you competing for a championship. Coach Andrea, really appreciate you taking the time to chat to us today. We we'll wish you nothing but the best for the start of the twenty twenty four season. Mm -hmm.